my guest. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Justin Davis from Drone Camps RC. Thanks for hanging out with us. Please click subscribe because we have tons of good content on this channel. If you haven't subscribed, you're missing out on all kinds of awesome new releases in the drone industry. So today I have a special guest from Unique Aviation. It is the Typhoon H. This is the most sought after drone this year uh, in the consumer drone market. This is around $12.99 um, starting out and then $18.99 with a full-blown Intel Sense and Avoid. It has a ton of options with it, all kinds of modes, follow me and all the modes you expect, and some new cool modes uh, thrown in here as well. Around a 25 minute battery, and it's just blowing away the competition out there this year. Um, the Typhoon H is winning all of my friends' hearts and minds as they fly this for the first time. Um, you, as you can imagine, it's really, really easy to fly. And what I like most about it is the fact that it is a hexacopter and it does have motor redundancy. So they added a special mode to this called five motor mode. And if you lose a motor on this, now a quadcopter is not gonna do this, it'll go into five motor mode and you'll still be able to fly at home, even manually fly it back or in GPS or the safe mode that's included with this. But let's go ahead and open up the box for you and show you what comes inside the Typhoon H. Now right away before I get started with this, I've got to tell you the most surprising thing about the Typhoon H is the price point. Um, for $12.99 you get what you're going to see here today and that's like mind boggling to me because the Phantom 4 is, is, was $13.99 starting out. Uh, it also has a bunch of cool features and you probably watch those videos if you're looking to buy either one of these. Um, I have a Phantom 4 personally myself that I got for our channel just for you guys so I could show you some tutorials which I promise I will do um, coming up as well as for the Typhoon H. I've just started flying this one so um, just getting into actually uh, experiencing some of the modes and um, how cool this one does fly. I did get to fly it on Sunday and it was really really awesome. I only have one battery at the moment which is kind of depressing um, because you, you get a good flight in, you get some great footage, and then you've got to go home and recharge. Um, so definitely get two batteries with yours if you can uh, because it's gonna, you're going to have a ton of fun with this one. Um, the ground station itself, uh, friends of mine have seen that, and they're blown away with the fact that like at $12.99, this controller looks like something that would cost at least $800, $900. Uh, right out of the box so it's super cool it's actually a full-blown Android tablet which you can hook up to Wi-Fi when you you get home or at a cafe you can actually edit your videos that you shoot on the unique the Typhoon H and and upload it straight to YouTube or whatever your your uh, video accounts gonna be on the internet so that's really really cool multiple flight modes for video mode capture in 4k uh, all the way down to 1080 you got 12 megapixel photos on this um, it does come with collision avoidance, which works about two meters away. Um, so it is kind of close in for this edition. You know, if you want the full blown Intel Sense and Avoid, you can add that on. You could get this first and then add on Sense and Avoid. It's just a couple screws on the back, a little module pops on, and you're good to go. Um, other modes as like task modes where you have the, the cable mode where you can send that out on a cable and do like a pre-programmed flight path on it, super cool. You can also use the wizard on this. I'm not totally sure if it uses the same wizard as a Q500. So if you wanna ask that in the comments below, you can, maybe somebody can answer that for us. Uh, also, it has three axis gimbal, which is standard, but cool thing about this is it's a 360 gimbal on here as well. Uh, integrated, of course, touch screen on the ST16 controller. And you can also use dual controls on this as well. So if you had um, some other type of controller, say from your Q500 that was compatible with this, you can do dual controls. So one guy's operating the camera and you're flying the copter. So that's extremely nice. And last but not least, the five motor mode, which I totally love. Uh, and you can do follow me, point of interest, um, you know, orbit mode and all that cool stuff on here. You can do another thing called team mode and that's where you're actually pairing up uh, different transmitters. 
nicest thing about this is that it does fold down um, and it doesn't have to be on to do that. So there's locks on all these hubs right here. The arms come down. Now the Inspire 1 um, has to be on to get it down into travel mode, which flattens it out to put it in the case. Unless you have a super deep case for the Inspire 1, you have to have it on to get it to flatten out. Nice thing about this, when I land it, I can turn everything on, off, and use my fingers to pop these arms and fold them down. Um, very, very convenient. So I'm really happy about that. So let's go ahead now, I'll open up the box. Uh, I don't want to keep you starving to see this. But uh, the box is, is, is also very nice. Shows you all the functions and everything on here. Uh, shows your orbit, point of interest, journey mode, curved cable cam, watch me and follow me, and your dynamic turn to return to home. And voila, the box disappeared, and now we have this black styrofoam. It is a very dense styrofoam. Now this is not the backpack. It is just the box that it comes in inside the cardboard box. So if you lift this off, you know, I was telling a friend of mine yesterday, looking at this, you could almost have some fabric put on the back of it by someone who knows. So there's holes down here uh, on the bottom of the landing gear comes through. But if you had some fabric, you could have something put over the back and maybe put some straps on the back. You could literally make this thing into a backpack if you were kind of handy uh, with sewing machine. But it is not a backpack. You have to buy that separately. We'll go ahead and take the top off. First thing I'm going to show you in here is this awesome transmitter. And it does go in there kind of upside down, so it's kind of deceiving. When you put it back in the box, you probably wouldn't think it would go in like that, but it does. So I was out on the beach with Trent and got to see this for the first time in person. It's absolutely amazing. Um, it has your USB port on the bottom, micro SD card here, headphone jack if you wanted to listen to your, your sound on your video edit, you wanted to edit in a cafe or something, you can do that. And this is full blown Android on here. Um, don't turn it on until you have your antennas on by the way. Your antennas are also in the box, it comes with this pole antenna and also comes with a standard cloverleaf antenna. A lot of people don't realize this, but when this goes on, you screw this on. When you're flying, you want to spin this around and flip your antenna up. So if you're flying in this position, you got your best polarity coming out here um, when your antenna, your mushroom antenna is sitting up like this. So, and you can flip this one. You can flip this one up as well. Kind of point it at the drone. Start stop button. I won't go through all these features on the ST10, uh, ST16 because there is a ton of features. Uh, learning this is going to be a lot of fun for me because I love to break things apart um, and, and learn. The video screen is in the right place. It feels like the right size. Now a lot of people want to compare this to the Phantom 4 controller and say, oh, this is kind of big and bulky. Not at all because when you add an iPad, it, Air or an iPad or iPhone to a Phantom 4 transmitter, it gets a lot more bulky with this much screen hanging off the top of that Phantom 4 transmitter. So uh, it also comes with an attachment for your sun shield. We'll go right on here. Comes in the box and it also comes with a strap with four points here that connect on the ST16. So that's kind of nice. It makes it more a lot more comfortable to fly. The batteries in the back. Um, I did have an issue where I had the screen go black. Now what you do to get around that, if you're if you start yours up and your screen doesn't load, if the screen turns black, go ahead and flip it over, turn it off, take the battery out, unplug the battery, plug the battery back in. Um, that did alleviate the situation. It seemed um, that there was some sort of an issue there, but um, I believe that's going to be whatever it might be updated in a future firmware update. I wouldn't let that stop you from grabbing one of these though, because this is an, an amazing piece of architecture engineering. Next up we have charger cable. Pretty cut and dry there. It's plugged into your standard AC outlet. Set that to the side. And the power supply. 
plugs into your charger. We have the charger itself. Some guys are doing some pretty cool stuff with this charger out here. Uh, they're taking this apart and they're adding like a, uh, a voltmeter on the outside of it so they can tell um, what voltage their battery's at. And then you have some display buttons, uh, or is this, excuse me, display LEDs on the front here. And those tell you the green, it's green blinking is, is ready to charge. Red blinking is charging. Uh, red green is blinking, cell balancing and charging. Solid green would be a charge complete and blue would be blinking solid. Um, if it's blinking in solid blue, there's an error. Hopefully you don't get any errors. And you have your welcome information package. This should be your quick start guide. I mean, I was flying this probably within five to 10 minutes after I first um, got the battery charged up and went out to the field with this. It doesn't take long to get out and fly. And one last thing before I show you the Typhoon H, the props. The props on the Typhoon H feel really nice. They're really rigid. They are plastic props. They're not carbon props. But for a quad, or for excuse me, for a hex this size, you really don't need carbon props on there. It's kind of overkill. Um, really large multi rotors use uh, carbon props because you have a heavier load and you want less flex in the props. But lighter quads and hexacopters, you can get away with plastic props because the it kind of acts like a dihedral a little bit when you're flying and it actually flies a little smoother. And we're not worried about these flexing and breaking because of the, the weight and the load on this. So you can definitely rely on these props. Now one last thing that you might miss is in this very top panel, this little tiny box here. This is your accessories box. And what's in that is your USB cable for your firmware updates. It will hook to the bottom of your transmitter and to the bottom of the camera on the gimbal as well. You have your micro SD card adapter in here. Let's see what kind of micro SD card they gave us uh, with Typhoon H. See if I can get this open with a razor blade. And I tried some higher end SD cards and they didn't want to load up. So if you guys get some type of SD card that doesn't recognize it in the transmitter, go ahead and, and try something different. Um, I can probably show you on the screen which one they recommend, but this is a Panasonic. This comes with a 16 gigabyte micro SD here, so not bad. And then you pop it in here and that goes in your computer to download your videos, unless you already have another USB um, micro SD converter. We'll set that to the side. And now, We'll pull out the Typhoon H. There it is, guys, the most awesome drone in the industry this year. The Typhoon H is finally out of the box and exposed. Um, I found one more thing in the box, and that is an adapter for your car. So you can charge your batteries on the run. This would have really helped me and Trent out of the beach uh, when we were flying the Typhoon H doing that 40 mile an hour follow me test. Um, because we only had quite a, we only had a few batteries, um, but uh, I didn't realize it came with that car charger. So a lot of other drones that I've gotten over the years don't come with a car charger, and some of the prices on those were pretty high, like a hundred dollars or so for for your charge uh, your car charger um, adapter or cable. So that's really nice that they include that. Like I said, like for the value, this is really nice uh, for twelve ninety nine. This outfit. So this is the Typhoon H all folded down. And I'll show you, I'll spin this around for you. You can see the retracts here. I mean, they really, they really got everything packed into this. They did a lot of research before they made this and kind of find out what pilots want. Um, the batteries in here, you can pull this up and it should slide right out. This is a, I believe it's a 4S 5400. So, you might be able to see that there. Come in a little bit closer for you. So 4S 5400, it gives us around 25 minutes. Um, I got a rest respectively around 22 minutes with this battery. I'm definitely gonna have to pick up another battery because flying it just once the other day um, out in this huge, beautiful field, I really wanted a second battery. So I'll go ahead, I'll spin this around and we'll go ahead and put the arms up for you. 
and I'll show you how the props go on. There's everybody, every single arm up. Everybody's up and ready to fly. So, since an avoid is on the front here, um, and it does have quite a, a high degree of view out the front, uh, almost all the way out to the side, you can check out the full specs um, down below. I'm gonna list some of those specs for you guys so you can read some of that. Motors are, just like every other drone on the market, they are color-coded here, so no problem getting your, your props mixed up. There's no way to do that. These do twist and lock into place, and there's actually a push button on the very top of it, which is really, really nice. So these go into place, and they spin and click. Now, the first time you do this, it might seem a little bit strange, because it's way different than what we're used to with the DJI Phantom stuff. Um, so this is designed completely different. Um, if I could bend the drone forward here, might be able to show you this. There are notches in the very top of this. There you go. There are notches in the very top. There's four notches and they spin and lock over. Um, and then the button, you'll hear the button do a snap when it's in place. So real quick, really, I'll give you a quick rundown of the SD16. I don't know a whole lot about this yet, so I'm not gonna go into to, too much depth. I don't talk about things until I really know about them. Um, I have, like I said, I've, I've flown this for a day, and I'm gonna show you the basics of what's going on here. Um, very simply, right up top you have your start-stop button, and that starts and stops the props. After you have enough satellites, I usually let it load up um, for, for a lot of, like at least a minute or so, and then it'll, it'll let you fly. Um, once you have the props armed, they'll come on to a kind of an idle speed and you can go ahead and use in, in mode two, just lift your throttle stick up and lightly come off the ground. I was telling you guys about those cool pan modes and those are up on the top left. You have different tilt modes here, A and V, and you also have different various pan modes, which is kind of nice as well, and F and G. And there's, this is a three position switch, as well as this one for tilt mode. Now pan control knob is also very nice. This lets you change the speed of your pan. So if you're working on a pan, um, it will start to automatically pan around in a 360, and you can change the speed of that pan with this knob. Very, very cool. It does feature these little posts here, for hooking on your um, neck strap. And if you can, go ahead and make this full screen. And I'm gonna get a little closer to this screen and show you just a few things uh, as far as the telemetry is concerned. Uh, over on the right hand, we have the auxiliary button here. Up in the very top right hand corner is the landing gear switch. It goes up and down. Push this all the way forward when you first fire it up because you don't want it to go try to go into the up position right when you fire it up. Make sure all your switches are always facing away from you when you turn this transmitter on. The on button's down here with a little blue status light there, LED indicator. And the next button over is ob obstacle avoid and simply turn that on or off here. Over on the right hand side is your flight mode switch for safe mode first uh, and then your, your A mode which is the uh, attitude mode which essentially it lets you have it takes it out of smart mode so smart mode no matter which way the drone is facing if you pull back on the stick it's going to come back to home so when you flip it over into the a mode that's going to take that smart mode off and let you fly like a regular copter does uh, without that smart mode on there so if you if you're facing yourself if you go push the stick left, the copter is gonna go right. If you push it to the right, it's gonna go left, et cetera, et cetera. So kind of like when you first started driving an RC car and you had it coming at you the first time and you realized that the controls were backwards. Um, takes a little getting used to, so if you flip over into A mode, um, be ready for that and be aware of that. Um, throttle on the left and your yaw stick as well, left and right, will spin the copter left and right for your pans. If you wanna do a, a manual pan, you can do it that way. Stick on the right hand side, that's going to control your roll and your pitch. So moving the copter forwards, backwards, left and right. And now let's show you a little bit about 
the interface. This is my favorite part. I'm gonna go ahead and move this in a little closer to the camera. Hopefully it'll go in focus for you here. Okay. This is a full-blown Android tablet. My favorite thing. You can press on pad down here. This very bottom of the screen, you have pad, system settings, channel settings, which is grayed out, and model select. You can bind this up to other models, I guess, or maybe another Typhoon if you have one. Uh, but first we're gonna show you that this is indeed a full-blown tablet. So if you wanna download any apps from the App Store, you can absolutely do that here. You can download an editing software for your, your videos, edit those on the road. Uh, it already has a movie studio in here. Music for your, your soundtracks for your videos. The sound recording, if you wanna do a voiceover, you can do that with that headphone jack down there. You can plug in a, a microphone and do that. That's super awesome. You have a clock app on there. You have your calendar calculator. So if you wanna figure out how much you're gonna charge those drone clients you have for uh, your awesome videos, over here, it takes you back to flight mode. You have Google Maps on here, your Google settings, gallery, and you even have a web browser on there. So very, very nice. Um, and it also has your downloads and email and file manager. Your file manager is where all your videos and pictures and everything are gonna be stored. Uh, let's see if I can tilt that up a little bit. Kind of hard to see, but uh, sorry about that, folks. So here you have your pictures, videos, music, documents, installed apps, archives, your Android apps and your favorites down at the very bottom here. So just like any Android tablet, we have these buttons down at the bottom and I can go back out of that. If I wanna go back to the flight mode, I just hit flight mode up in the top right hand corner and it'll take me back to our live view. So very, very cool. I'm gonna scoot this a little closer. So we are getting close to the end of this battery. This is the battery that I flew the other day that I was telling you about. So really quickly, you have telemetry on the left-hand side, volts, GPS, satellite, position, altitude. You have your GPS speed, your distance away. Uh, your auto white balance stuff is here. You can change that from sunny to cloudy to fluorescent or auto white balance, um, incandescent or sunrise. On the right-hand side, you have your SD card status, your flight mode that you're currently in, that will change when you go into follow me and orbit mode and team mode and all those other cool things. Uh, GPS calibration, which you absolutely should do every time you take off in a different location or you fly somewhere new. Uh, and your, your task for your camera, you have also. And um, there's a ton more in this transmitter. I wanna tell you guys all about it um, today, but I cannot fit it all in this unboxing video and overview. So um, the last most important buttons on here uh, are your camera button here and your video button here. Kind of hard to see but there's an icon of a camera and a video camera on this side. Now the other biggest switch on here that I, that I find really helpful if I get way out there and I get confused about where I am is this right flight mode here switches all the way down to an H and that is return to home. So that is one of the, also the most very important um, switch features. So be sure to check out another video. We'll go more into depth on this um, and we'll really break it down for you. And I'll, I'll show you how to update the firmware um, on that. And on the back of the transmitter, I gotta show you that before I let you go and go into the next segment. The video lever here controls the tilt of the camera. And you should be able to change the speed of that as well. And this is the rabbit and turtle mode. So if you want it to fly faster or slower, if you want more of a cinematic look, you can do that uh, by going down to turtle mode. Also a really handy carrying handle here. And that makes it really nice, has a nice rubber grip. And really, actually really nice rubber grips on the side here too as well. Very bottom, I might have showed you this earlier. It's your USB port, micro SD card port, and your headphone port. Uh, if you put a micro SD card in here, and if it does do a bug where it turns the screen black, like I said, take the battery, unplug it from the transmitter itself, plug it back in, and then restart the transmitter if that bug is still around. Um, that's the way to fix that that I ran into. So. Let's go ahead and move on to the next part of the video.
So I think it'll be cool to show you how many grams this thing weighs. It is over the 250 gram mark, which is gonna require you to register this uh, with the FAA. So you wanna put your number on here when you're flying it. Um, I'm gonna put it somewhere that's reasonably accessible. So let's see, let's move the camera down just a little bit. Let's see if I can move the, there we go. We're getting right at, let's see, 1961. So well over the 250 gram mark. Um, definitely want to check out knowbeforeyoufly.org and uh, click on the links there for the FAA registration on this one. And also for those of you that might want to know what it weighs in pounds, um, we'll go ahead and flip it over with the battery in it. This is the takeoff weight and I'll show you what it weighs uh, right at 4.3 pounds. So this one is definitely heavier than the Phantom 4. Now I'll show you what the copter weighs by itself. So we're at 3.5 pounds, three, just above 3 pounds, the copter itself. Now of course the 360 gimbal on here is, is very, very nice. I was showing some people uh, on the ground the other day that were watching me fly this. Some of the automatic pan modes that you can do on here, you can actually change the pan speed. So after you put your retracts up, your camera will spin all the way around, like I've said time and time again with this gimbal. Super awesome, 360, yay, thank you for that. The landing gear are carbon fiber with foam pads on the end of each landing gear. And they do come all the way up and out to the side. And there's the battery bay in the very back. The module, if you wanna add sense and avoid, you can possibly see these two screw holes here in the back. Some people commented that this feels um, a little bit plasticky in, in certain areas. Uh, but like I said, like with this five motor mode, I don't think you're gonna have to worry about this one crashing. Um, it does feel really solid to me. The top of this looks really, really neat. It looks like something that Intel designed themselves. Um, you have your GPS up here as well, your power button in the very front. As, as looks and function for this copter are, are what sold me on it personally. If I wanted to base my opinion uh, on this so far, I flew this one afternoon. I, I do like flying hexacopters a lot. And right now I would probably say that I might actually get rid of my Phantom 4 um, to own this one. So if I wanted to move the money over and just get a Typhoon H. If I had to choose one or the other, I might actually go for the Typhoon H. Um, simply because it is a hexacopter and you've got that motor redundancy on there and all those cool modes. My overall impression of this, the first week that I've had this out there, I've got to give this a five stars for sure. Five stars all the way for the Typhoon H. Um, if you're looking to pick one of these up, I, I would highly suggest it. If you want to spend more money, you're going to get into the two to $3,000 range to get anything better than this one right now on the market. And I've seen a lot of drones. I've flown just about everything out there, you guys. So you can definitely trust my opinion on this one. This is definitely a winner and a home run this year. You know, this one got the best of 2016 at CES uh, for a really good reason. A lot of research went into this. They listened to what people want in a drone and they delivered and they did it on a, on, a, on a really quick um, basis last year, developing it and then releasing it um, about the second quarter of this year. So I spent a good amount of time working on it um, and also on the software. They had put a lot of us out for quite a while waiting on this, this update to come out for the, for the software, the flight controller, so that it would be perfectly solid when they deliver it to their customers. They made people wait a little longer and people don't like to wait. With this kind of stuff, it's extremely necessary to wait 
and let the company get everything exactly right before they do send it out. So there's, you know, in, on any drone out there, I've got to be honest with you, there's gonna be bugs, there are gonna be things that they have to keep updating with the firmware because this stuff is really, really complicated to program. And the, all the guys at Unique that are doing this and over at DJI, they are geniuses, they know what they're doing, but from time to time, they do have to do updates because, you know, they all do have flaws. But this one, like I said so far, I'm extremely happy with it. It gets spectacular 4K video. I, I was out in the rolling hills of Oregon filming uh, over some beautiful green property, and I came with some, back with some fantastic footage. I'll have to uh, show you some stills of that at some point, uh, or maybe I'll just upload some of the footage that I got uh, out there. I'm gonna go out there to that same location again and do some more flying with this. So hopefully I'll go out there for some specifically for some video shooting. But um, the other day was just strictly, strictly testing out the modes. And uh, we're gonna take another coastal trip and I'll bring back some footage and show you guys. So, hey, thanks for hanging out, checking out the Typhoon H with me. Um, I'm gonna go more in depth on this one later with you. If you get one of these, be sure to subscribe to this channel because I'm going to really do some nice tutorials on this this year. Show you guys how to update the firmware. We'll show you about some of the different modes. I'm gonna go into the transmitter, the ST16, and I'm gonna give you some tips about storing your batteries and making sure that your batteries are safe uh, while you're charging. Um, and I'm really gonna dive into this. So please click subscribe. Be sure to follow us on our Instagram as well because uh, look up drone camps on Instagram. I wanna make sure that you guys do that because there's a ton of photos of new stuff, new drones coming out all the time and companies are now sending drone camps, uh, their, their drones from around the world. I mean, we're getting them from Russia, we're getting them from China, we're getting them from Europe. Um, they're coming from the United States, just about everywhere. So please do subscribe and uh, come hang out with us and fly some drones. So. Thanks again for watching. I'm Justin Davis, and this is the Unique Typhoon H.